What is going on guys? Welcome to my review of season one of Peacock's Twisted Metal, a TV series that is based off of the PlayStation video game series. For those that have never played it or just don't play video games, Twisted Metal was essentially like a car deathmatch arcade style game. You could do single player tournament style, you could do two player and face off against your siblings, which is most of the time that I spent playing Twisted Metal. Twisted Metal 2, I have a ton of good memories with. Me and my brother Dylan just attacking each other constantly. But it's been a pretty popular mainstay in PlayStation. There was three games, I believe, on the original PlayStation. We had Twisted Metal Black on either PS2 or PS3. And then in like 2012, there was a reboot version. And that was the last one that we've got. But it's always been one of the more recognizable names for PlayStation fans. And one of the newest properties to be done in a live action format. And so this is one I've always been kind of curious about. I was always curious because there's a lot of really crazy style to Twisted Metal. And being that it's not necessarily a game that is based on a lot of narrative. Of course, there's lore, there's backstories to characters and things like that. And there's a basic premise. There's a lot of room to do things new and a lot of things they have to fill in with the narrative. And that's always a really big difficulty when you're adapting a known IP because there's going to inevitably be a lot of things added in that were never in the original games and that can either succeed in kind of reinforcing what's great and what we all love and remember about those games or it can be an incredible distraction and you walk away with a lot of people saying this feels nothing like the games. So as far as the story in season one, essentially you've got Anthony Mackie as John Doe, who is a character in, I believe, Twisted Metal Black, and he is, eventually becomes the driver of Roadkill, and you'll recognize that car because that was one of the more kind of mainstay vehicles in the Twisted Metal series from what I remember. And he has no memory of his previous life past a certain point, and he's what they call a milkman. It's a post-apocalyptic world. You have different factions, different sides of the United States that are walled off, and rich people are inside the walls, poor people are outside the walls. And he's essentially like a smuggler. He does delivery runs from faction to faction, and he tries to go and get things that the rich people won't leave the safe cities for, and he makes a living and lives out his life doing that. And he is given a job by Nev Campbell, who is a higher up in one of these factions, to go and retrieve this item in like the really scary and dangerous side of the U.S. and bring it back. And that's essentially the story of the 10 episodes that you have here, is Anthony Mackie as John Doe, experiencing a lot of different characters, some that a lot of people who are Twisted Metal fans will recognize, and then trying to get back in one piece to complete this mission and earn his way into finally being able to live behind these walls instead of outside of them. And starting off with the positives, I think that that general premise is a really good way to insert us into this world without a ton of origin to how this happened or a ton of explanation of what was the apocalypse and how did all these different factions grow. It's kind of just like, yeah, we've seen this before. Let's just get into what makes this world different. And I think because they're using a good amount of the episodes of this first season, to introduce us to different factions, different pieces of the now post-apocalyptic U.S., and introduce a couple of the popular characters of the video game series. It does a pretty good job at bringing a narrative that was never the focus of Twisted Metal, while also introducing us to a lot of those elements that genuinely does feel like Twisted Metal. The show also has a really good cast. Anthony Mackie as the lead does really good, and I've always really enjoyed him. Most people just know him as Falcon, just the sidekick to Captain in America, but I've seen him do quite a few other things beyond the MCU, and I always enjoy what he brings, and he definitely has much more of a comedic performance in the show, which I haven't quite seen from him before, so that was kind of interesting, because he's got a pretty good sense of humor, I feel. You also have things like Sweet Tooth, where the physical performance is the wrestler Samoa Joe, but the voiceover performance is Will Arnett, and I think that pairing was awesome. There's a couple of people out there that were angry that Samoa Joe couldn't do it all, but it's hard to imagine a better voice work job than what Will Arnett brought. I thought that they nailed the Sweet Tooth character together. Nev Campbell, of course, is always great as a horror fan to see her manage her expectations with how much screen time that she has, because she pretty much just kind of bookends the season. And even like Thomas Hayden Church, who's kind of more of the mainstay villain of this entire season as Agent Stone, another character from the video games. There's other side characters too that I don't really want to spoil, but a really good, well-rounded cast. I personally 
originally felt the show was at its best when it really leaned into the twisted metal style, when it is focusing on the car battles and guns and missiles, and there's certain sequences throughout the season and one really standout sequence in the season that is just pure unadulterated twisted metal and I think most fans of the video game are going to latch on to those sequences the most and they do a pretty good job albeit a limited budget that you can certainly tell is a Peacock series of bringing the twisted metal experience to live action. And finally I do think that this first season does a good enough job at setting up a lot of really interesting things to be explored in further seasons. I do feel like it leaves you wanting more. It leaves you in a spot where you're like Okay, I'm hooked for season two whenever that comes. I'm gonna keep watching. Moving on to the mixed aspects, it's the comedic tone that this show goes for. Now, Twisted Metal is an absolute bonkers series. There was no way to do this 100% straight and not have it come out ridiculous. So I think having a bit of a tongue-in-cheek, zany, kind of almost parody style of humor towards the Twisted Metal lore and the Twisted Metal formula was probably the right way to go. And when that humor works, I think it works well. And most of the time it works well with the character of Sweet Tooth. A lot of his zaniness, I think, is some of the standout of the show. Like it with the beat go. Da -da, da -da. Baby, let your booty go. Da -da, da -da. Girl, I know you want a show. Da -da, da -da. Thong, da -da, da -da. Thong, thong, thong. Do you love this over here, God? However, there is a lot of humor. A lot of humor in the show that fell completely flat for me. Now, again, I've said it numerous times. I'm a hard audience when it comes to comedy. So a lot of you might enjoy this comedy and the tone of this show more than I did, but I felt like it was almost too funny for its own good to the point where it feels like somebody trying to do the Deadpool humor, just that mile a minute quirkiness and smart ass kind of tone. And I don't think it works even 50% of the time. I think that there's some strong jokes. I think there's a lot of duds. This never happened to me before. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. And it's to the point where it actually made it hard for me to really feel for these characters, especially Anthony Mackie's character for the first probably three or four episodes, because the first half of the season is way more about the comedic timing than the back half of the season. Once things start to get a little bit more intense and the mission starts to get a lot more dangerous. I feel like they toned it down enough to where that would have been a better mix if the whole series was like the last half. But that first half, man, was just like every five seconds, Anthony Mackie trying to do a joke and he tries his best, but it just didn't work all that well for me consistently. Another mixed aspect without going into too much detail, this first season pretty much acts as like a prequel to the story that you would expect from Twisted Metal. It's very similar to like season one of Preacher or even the most recent Mortal Kombat movie to where it's all about setting things up to eventually get to the tournament, to get to what you would expect a Twisted Metal live action thing to be about. And there's good that comes with that because I feel like in order to have characters that you actually give a shit about, you probably need to spend some time building out character arcs and, and assembling a little bit of origins for some of these characters and getting us to understand the world before we go kind of zoom in on the tournament and Calypso and all of that. At the same time, I feel like a lot of the fans of the video games are gonna watch this and get very impatient and say, this is not Twisted Metal. This is not what I would sign up for. This is not what I would click play on a Twisted Metal show for. Where is that at? The night is opening night. <laughs> and now moving on to the negatives. The main one is I don't feel like they had enough to fill out 10 episodes. Now these are 30 minute episodes. So even with a 10 episode series, it's a pretty easy binge. I got through this in about three sittings. But by the end of the series, by the end of this first season, it felt like they had about five episodes worth of story. You know, that initial setup, that first episode or two did really good at setting things up. I felt like the show really picked back up again in the last two or three episodes. That middle four, five episode chunk there was a lot of meandering and was a lot of just kind of re-exploring the same things, getting to an area, having a character that we recognize from the video games and then they move on to somebody else. Even the central relationship is kind of another negative for me where you have John Doe and you have this character Quiet, who I don't remember being in the video games, but correct me down below. And essentially it's like a buddy cop scenario to where they don't like each other at first and then they kind of grow to like each other. 
but that growth between those two characters is repeated like nine or ten times throughout this entire first season to where they hate each other, they try to kill each other, then they kind of like each other, and then they screw each other over, and then they reunite, and then they really like each other, and then one of them leaves, and then they reunite, and then one of them leaves, and it was just over and over and over to where I'm like, fucking hell, can one of you just shit or get off the pot? And there was elements of that relationship that I thought that they did well, but that constant just back and forth and back and forth of changing the status quo to me really got redundant would have been better if it was half the size of a season it wouldn't have been as bad but for 10 episodes of that I just didn't care after like a third or fourth time that they did it and because they don't in my opinion have enough compelling narrative and enough compelling character arcs to fill out this first season that is acting as a prequel I do think that there's a very valid criticism that by the time you get to the end of the season and they start to talk about and tease things that are going to be much more interesting in the future, that to a degree you feel a little bit cheated about the time that we just had to spend to get to that point. Something else that bugged me by the end, which is going to be very different for every person who's a fan of this series that watches this show, while I loved seeing Sweet Tooth brought to life and I think that they did a damn good job with that character, Every other one of my favorite characters from this franchise are not in this first season, and they're directly teased for the future. So I'm not going to name which characters because I don't want to go into spoilers, but basically every other character besides Sweet Tooth where I was like, ooh, I can't wait to see what they do with them, I didn't get to see what they did with them. And my final negative is that while I think that certain characters from the video games are done really well here and are going to put a smile on the face of fans, especially if that was like the go-to character that you always played as, but there's one or two choices in this first season to kind of make a mainstay character of this series a bit of the blunt of a joke that I feel like might piss a few people off. Now, I'm not necessarily invested enough in those characters for me to get mad and I understand there's an inherent silliness to some of these characters that really makes it easy to turn them into a joke but you got to be careful with that <laughs> because certain fans can get really passionate about uh, I'm sorry you just said what about Calypso you just said what about Mr. Slam all in all this first season was an easy watch it was certainly entertaining I'm invested enough to check out a season two especially if season two is going to be more of what I would want the twisted metal experience to be but this first season was certainly a bit of a mixed bag to where they, they set up some interesting things, they set up some interesting characters, they got me invested enough to stick with it, but my experience with these first 10 episodes wasn't consistently engaging enough for me to say that it was a complete home run, because it just wasn't. Well, that's it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed that, please click over here for my 2023 new release reviews playlist. I'm also going to put a video from my gaming channel, which you should subscribe to if you're a fan of gaming, of most important video games for my life as well as my buddy Rudy. Like, share, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss everything in the future. And as always, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean you have to be.